Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. In this video, I am going to make this lamp. And it is basically a lamp from 99 cent store parts. These guys here are Easter egg fillers that I found from the 99 and this guy is a plastic pot that I found at the Dollar Tree and then I have some hardware mesh that I also used and some basic lamp parts. So let's go do this. I found these cute little frogs uh, in the Easter section at the 99 cent store. They're actually sold to be filled with you know little candies or whatever and filled in Easter baskets but I really thought they were adorable and I wanted to try and see if I could turn them into a lamp. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to glue them sealed so that they are good and stable before I attempt to drill some holes into them. Now to glue them up, I'm going to be using this PC7. And basically PC7 is an epoxy, but it is a paste epoxy. It's not like your regular five minute epoxy, that stuff, even though it dries clear, it is very thin and can be a little bit hard to manage. In a situation where I don't mind, it not being clear, this I find to be a lot stronger and a lot easier to work with. It will dry a, like a black coloring, so you have to just keep that in mind. And as long as it's going to be in a place that you're not going to see them, it's going to be no big deal. In the case of these guys, I'm going to be applying it on the inside and then I'll keep the outside clean and they're going to get spray painted eventually. So I'm not worried about, you know, what really shows up on them. Whenever you are working with any type of epoxy, you want to make sure that you are using some rubber gloves so that you don't get that stuff stuck all over your hands because it becomes really impossible to clean up. These are two part epoxies that you mix together and it's a part A and part B. In order to prolong the life of my epoxy, it is handy to have a separate mixing stick for each so that whenever I'm using them, not contaminating the containers. And then I have one to do my overall mixing. I have just a piece of scrap wood that I have laying around the studio. I'm just gonna use it as a surface to mix the epoxy on. You could use a paper plate or something else that's disposable. So take a chunk of part A, And then I'm gonna go in for part B. I wanna make sure that they look even. Um, you don't have to be really technical. I'm just gonna eyeball what looks like it's the same amount of blob that's on here. And then I'm gonna take another stick that I'll use for the mixing and you want to blend the two parts together. I'm gonna give these a good overnight set before I do any more to them. Now that my frogs have had a chance to cure, I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole in them large enough for this straw to run through. The straw is what I'm gonna use to hide my wiring and hopefully if this goes well and I don't crack this piece, I'll have a nice hole that I can run this straw through and then run the wiring through that. I'm going to spray paint them three different metallic colors. So I also found a package of three of these little pots from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use this as the base of my lamp so I'm going to drill a hole in this as well. And then I'm going to spray paint this black. So I thought I'd make the lampshade out of this leftover hardware mesh from the garden. You know, you could buy your lampshade, you know, they have plenty of pre-made lampshades, or you can make one out of various different materials. And since I have this stuff, I thought I'd give it a go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut four sides. Probably put on some safety glasses because bits of um, metal can fly around at you, it's not good. I'm gonna go eight by six. Most lampshades have a slight taper, so I'm gonna come in an inch on each side and just draw a diagonal line and then cut that line. Sandwiching it between the blue tape so that it'll be a little bit easier to cut since I'm cutting this weird diagonal.
really should not be using my square for this with a sharpie but too lazy to go find something else. All right, I'm gonna repeat that three more times and then I should have something that resembles a lampshade top. So I cut all my pieces and the next thing I am going to do is I'm going to be applying this copper tape and this is just a copper foil tape that I actually use when I'm doing stained glass but you can purchase this on Amazon. In fact they even sell some version of this copper foil tape at the garden store to um, ward off slugs. Apparently they, the reflective quality freaks them out. The kind that they do sell are going to be thicker than this. I'm just going to go ahead and apply this foil around the edge of my four pieces and I'm gonna put one on each side and then one across the bridge of it to kind of lock it all in so basically I'm gonna go over each side three times and this foil is very delicate so you know you want to not rip off everything that you need and just slowly kind of peel back the paper as you're going and just use a regular pair of scissors so I've applied it to one side. I'm gonna go flip it over and apply it to the opposite side so that the foil is sticking to itself. This foil is also used for circuitry or soldering electronics. So you can probably find it also at an electronics place. I also wanna go ahead and apply it to the top and the bottom. Okay, so I cut up two pieces of scrap wood, one that is just under six by six and one that is just under eight by eight. And I'm just gonna use them to help me position the pieces and hold them in place while I solder. So um, I also have a jar of stainless steel push pins that I use whenever I am soldering. So I have my soldering iron, some solder, this is 60-40, so you want to be making sure you're doing this in a ventilated area because it is 60-40 um, tin to lead. The solder, you can get different kinds of solder at the regular hardware store. And then my flux, and I like using this paste flux, which liquid fluxes are very easy to come by. This is just a paste version rather than a liquid version because the liquid sometimes can get all over the place. And so I'm just gonna apply flux to my area here that I'm gonna solder. If you are not working in a well ventilated area, please wear a respirator. I'm just gonna get two areas on and then go around and just tack my, my corners first and then I can go back and do the whole thing. I have large gaps like this, sometimes I just tap a couple sections, let it sort of build up as a filler. Let it set, and then you can go back and add some more. I'm gonna be doing the inside once I get the outside tacked on and that will also help seal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for the other four sides before taking this apart and flipping it over. So I have some basic tree trimming wire and I decided on a bulb that I'm gonna be using for this guy. And I'm just going to make something here 
that will adhere to the bulb once the bulb is in the, the socket. There are two different kinds of lampshades. The kind that rest over the bulb and then the kind that um, link to the bottom of where the bulb socket goes. I think that it probably would be much easier just to have one that will just rest on top of the bulb rather than one that I have to try and finagle wiring around where the socket goes. And then I gotta go in and cover those bits with the tape because this wire is not going to adhere to the copper. You don't want to use copper wire here because copper is a conductor of electricity. And so it'll, it'll hold in the heat and I don't want it to hold any of that heat while around the bulb. If you've ever had like a battery in your pocket and some pennies and you're wondering why you, know, you feel like you're on fire, it's because copper can hold an electrical charge. And so to reduce any risk, I don't want to use a copper wire. Once I let this set, I'm going to go ahead and apply flux around the edges that are still exposed copper and I'm going to do a process that's called tinning where I go in and I just apply flux around the edge of where that copper is. The reason why I did this on the edge is I wanted to build up this edge and have it a little bit stronger rather than having just the exposed hardware wire and then I also am going to come in and put in a blackened patina on these edges and so having that will just kind of enhance the, the overall look of the shade. So I went and washed off all of my solder and make sure to washed off all of the flux that was left on the solder and now I'm just applying this solution that I actually, it's a homemade solution. You can purchase patinas that are darkening or changing the color of your metal and they can get fairly expensive but this stuff is just copper sulfate that is used usually in the in gardening it's also used in textile dyeing and I get it in powdered form and just mix my own batch because it's so much cheaper it is not nearly as strong as the stuff that you would buy and then also this stuff has been sitting around for a year so I have this is would be much stronger if I had just made a fresh batch but it seems to be working on my hardware cloth as well which is pretty cool and I'm just painting it on Once I'm satisfied where the color is, I'm just going to wipe the solution off and then set it out in the sun to dry. I don't want to go back and wash it off again. I risk going back to the regular soldered color of the tin. Alrighty, time to assemble this thing. I am not a licensed electrician, so please do not attempt to do any kind of wiring without consulting a licensed electrician. I went in and I changed out the straw for a piece of brass tubing because the straw itself was just not strong enough to hold up my rig here. I also glued in a piece of wood in the bottom of the pot just to hold that brass tubing that I inserted. And that's pretty much it. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please like, share, and subscribe.